Thanks for checking out the best trip ever. She's Carrie. I am Jim. And we just got back from one of the most amazing resorts anywhere in the entire world and one of the best experiences that we have had when it comes to quality of service, quality of infrastructure and the resort and activities. Hotel Ishkaret in the Cancun Playa del Carmen Riviera Maya area. Yeah, this brand new family friendly hotel opened just a year ago and I'd had a couple of friends in the business who had been and they'd gone and raved but I went in with kind of a cautious eye because that's how I go into every hotel and I was there about an hour and I just couldn't stop saying wow 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 it's amazing so we have been to the Cancun area many times uh, before the hotel was built and we've seen the Ishkoret parks which looks to our eyes as saying Excoret but it's pronounced Ishkoret uh, they have cenote parks and they have zip lining parks and other activities parks and when Carrie and I go on vacation we don't do too many activities <laughs> I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. So we had never been to any of the Ishkaret options because it's just we hang out by the pool, we eat food, we have some drinks, we get some sun, and we're very content. Maybe we'll go into town, but, uh, you know, we've ziplined once in our lives, and we figured that was good. So uh, when, when we went into this, I didn't know what to expect. I thought this was going to be like... Uh, like a Mexican Orlando or something like that. I didn't know exactly what to expect, like a Mexican Great Wolf Lodge. What, what is this place that we're going to? And, and I agree with Carrie after just, I don't even know it took me an hour after just a few minutes. I was like, wow, these people are geniuses. One of the things that's the best draw, and I didn't really understand it until I stayed there was the fact is when you stay at Hotel Eshkaret, you get access to nine parks and activities. So these are included and that includes your transportation. Three of them are located right on property, and the other ones include transportation. So if you're going down, for example, for a week with your family, say it's a family of four, and you plan on doing four activities while you're there, at hundred, we'll say $125 per person per activity, that adds up quickly. When you stay at Hotel Eshkaret, these are all included. Every one of these activities, you could go do cenotes in the morning, do shellha in the afternoon for snorkeling. They're all included. No nickel and diming. It's all there. And really a nice thing about this is it's a very big resort, something like with 900 rooms? Yeah, they said it's 900 rooms, and that includes one tower that is for adults only where we stayed. So it's a very big resort, and oftentimes when you stay at these mega resorts, they can seem really crowded. So from what we understand, when we were there, Hotel Escaret was sold out, but because there are so many activity options, uh, so many people are busy during the day to go to all of the parks, options. Um, the hotel never felt packed the whole time we were there. And that's a, that's a tremendous feeling. Yeah, it was crazy. I would have thought that there would have been people everywhere and lines everywhere and crowds in the pool and no chairs. We got there at two o'clock in the afternoon and day one went out to the pool. No waiting to get into a restaurant. We had chairs available. Everything was just kind of there. And the design in this hotel is almost impossible to describe. It is just incredible how everything is connected by a series of bridges and everything has a focus on one pool or another. So we stayed in what was called Casa Fuego, which is the adult-only tower, and it is key card or wristband, and Jim will explain the wristbands later, that you have to be wristbanded and swipe into these doors to get into the tower. And when you stay in this tower, it's just for adults. It's king bed only. They do have sofa beds. It has its own private restaurant and as well as its own private upstairs rooftop bar and um, a fabulous pool like you've never seen. That pool is a great symbol of how smart the people that made this resort and designed this resort are. So you have two separate areas, two buildings, and there is a water bridge, a channel that connects the two, and it's got clear plexiglass between the two, and you can swim between the two pools and the two buildings. And not only that, as Carrie mentioned, uh, you have your uh, room key, your resort pass on your 
wrist, sort of like a Disney magic band. It's a little smaller, sort of looks like a thin plastic wristwatch. And throughout the resort, they have these picture spots called shelfies, again, using the X as a theme for the whole resort. And you'll see these cameras that look like spiders, these big, they look like big round ceramic spiders. And then you'll see this smiley face and you take your wrist and you do a circle following the arrows of the smiley face to a big circle and the camera will start blinking and you take your pose and it takes a picture. And so you can take a picture of yourself, for example, in this clear pool that's several stories above the beach. It's amazing. And then the cool part is that all of your pictures are categorized. And when you go back into your room, again, incredible technology, your TV turns on and it turns to the channel and you can see all of the pictures that you took that day. Um, again, these people are geniuses in the world where you have your camera and I have my phone and we take pictures all of the time and people kind of walk by, for example, picture takers at theme parks, they have found a way to find value. And, uh, you know, yeah, you buy the pictures, but they're totally worth it because they're all awesome pictures. And it's great because it's like a one-stop shop. You never have to bring your phone with you. You never have to bring your camera with you. And it's good all over the resort. I mean, we kept, we'd walk by like a, a tunnel and all of a sudden there'd be a picture spot and they knew exactly which direction to look up or point at. I mean, there were just dozens of locations. I'm sure we didn't find half of them on the property, and that also works at their theme parks. So when you go to the theme parks, no matter what attraction you're on, you swipe your wrist. Like, for example, we went down a water slide. You swiped your wristband to get on the slide, and so throughout the, the time you're on the water slide, it's taking your picture for you. It's incredible, and it's so much fun to get back to your room, to swipe your way into the room, and then immediately your TV's on and you get to see the adventures you just had. I wish I was half as smart as the people who designed this resort. Uh, we'll get back to some of the technology, but as far as the room, the room quality, love the design of the room. Oh, absolutely wonderful. And I would say this is probably the number two most comfortable bed we've ever had, which I was shocked about because a lot of times these larger hotels kind of mass market in my mind have just mediocre bedding, but here it was high quality bedding, high quality beds. It was like sleeping sleeping on a marshmallow, which is my, you know, determination and the high quality. They had a fabulous mini bar, um, both beverages as well as snacks, which was restocked daily. And it was all local products. So it was everything from peanuts to gummy candies to um, cajeta, so caramel candies. And it was all local. And it was just every little detail, the quality of the shampoo, the sunscreen, everything that was provided in the room was of a five-star caliber. So the resort ground itself are amazing. Uh, they had a pool where a lot of people hung out for the pool bar with a lot of adults when you first walk in. They had so many pools, depending on where you were on the resort, there was a really cool pool somewhere near your room. And up front in the beach area, they have designed this area. You could do a little bit of swimming. They don't encourage going out too far because it's primarily they say for kayaking. But this beach area, they have designed this whole area that looks like, like, I don't know, like you're in Hawaii or something with all these rock formations with moss and grass and pools and waterfalls coming off of these rock foundations, uh, these rock uh, structures in the beach area. It's, it's like a tropical paradise that they've constructed. And when you're out in your tropical paradise with your chairs, you also have bar service. They're coming around and bringing you drinks. There's restaurants down there. And it's amazing. You see people paddle boarding. And if you get tired of that location, you can wander through and then you'll end up in different caves and you, there's steps into the caves and you can start swimming into the caves and connected to that are towers of rooms that have rooms that are rooms that step right into the caves. It just meanders forever. We did not probably do half of what there was to do in terms of location because there was so much to do and we didn't have enough time in four days. 
caves. Speaking of caves, they've got one of the coolest restaurants you could ever go to, Las Cuevas, uh, which means the caves. And surprisingly, it's a restaurant inside of these man-made, what I assume are man-made caves that, that look completely natural. But what a, what a great environment for a restaurant. Yeah, and it's done as a Brazilian steakhouse. So I think our server came around and told us there were going to be at least 20 different kinds of proteins coming around. And it was everything from filet mignon to shrimp to, I had the most amazing octopus. I mean, they had just come and coming that in addition to they had starches they had a salad bar pretty much if you could name it they had it there and they just keep coming around and even afterwards they had desserts and then sitting outside the cave out by one of the lagoons they had a fire pit going and they had all the makings for s'mores so there was nothing you could not have while you were there just amazing. They also had an incredible buffet, one of the greatest buffets we've ever seen. Uh, by far the coolest theming I've ever seen. They set up El Mercado to look like um, a food stand, like you our food hall, like you'd find at, say, Harrods in London. And it changed by whatever meal service it was. So if it was breakfast, they had eight kinds of fresh squeezed juices. They had horchata. They had fresh waters. I mean, you pretty much name it, they had it. If you went for, like, for example, we walked through at dinner time. We weren't dining there, but I wanted to see it. They had a taco cart set up where they were doing street tacos. They had 17 kinds of uh, ice cream and gelato, plus self-serve candy, every kind of candy you could think of. They had churros. They had different protein stations, two kinds of chicharrones. There was nothing you couldn't find there. And the theming was so well done because it wasn't one big, you know, line at a buffet. It was all different stations, and you would have sworn that you were in a food hall. Just incredible the way they designed this. Um, so many food options, and you said, like you said, such a cool design. Uh, we went to the other, uh, the adult restaurant uh, that was also excellent. Oh gosh, we had brunch there, and I had some Mexican pastries I've never had before, and I thought I'd try them all. And the food was out of this world, truly gourmet. I had a croque madame, and it was made with truffle sauce. And I didn't think that you could make a croque madame ever, even better, but I would say that they mastered it. This place had so many areas that you would just love like you peeled it like an onion because there were different paths you could walk down and you'd find new pools to swim in or new parts of the resort there's a whole kids area with like an octopus slide uh, there are boat rides that they use and then there's also a world-class spa that spa was incredible so again kind of going with the theme of being in the caves and the lagoons they have their wet area when you go into prior to your treatment where you're overlooking the lagoons which you can step into it had hot pools and cold pools and hot saunas and dry saunas and just multiple locations all in a cave setting then they call you in for your treatment and you go into a cave for your actual treatment and at first I got in there and I thought gosh it's kind of cold in here being a cave but it warms up and it was done with up lighting and it was one of the most amazing treatments it ever had uh, speaking of swimming uh, I actually did do that I was uh, I used the philosophy the therapy room with a whole area which is open air which is so cool and they have all of the pools and saunas and jacuzzis that are part of all the great the loss of therapy rooms i loved the sauna by the way i love a good steam room and this steam room was the perfect temperature because i stayed in there for probably about 20 minutes you stayed in so long that i forgot you were there and i got done with my treatment and i left whoops didn't realize that he was still having still in there i thought he'd already left so i left and i found my way to the kids restaurant where they had a help yourself candy bar so it was like I was robbing a sweet factory so and uh, while I was there I also uh, went down the stairs and did go swimming in the lagoon I'm sure the spa attendant was like what is this guy doing he's taking him too much of my time he's annoying me but I had to go swim in the lagoon with all the caves and everything just because it's so much fun but uh, just an incredible options for swimming and entertainment um just this hotel Ishkaret is amazing. Um, they have many bars that that uh, people use. The bar service was excellent. Uh, the restaurants were excellent. And then we didn't go to all of the parks, but we did go to one of the parks, and it was so unique. Yeah, I was given a choice as to what I wanted to do because I was there for part of an incentive trip. And so they say, what are you interested in? And I looked at the options, and I didn't want to zip line. We'd done that before. I didn't want to ride an ATV, and I wasn't really up for snorkeling. So then I saw that they had a new park that was called Shenches. So it's X. 
sex and then senses. And I thought, well, this seems bizarre. So let's go for this one. And so I signed us up to go there. And I am so glad that we did. Oh, my gosh. What a cool idea. Um, again, this park, this, this census park, I'm just going to call it census. Calling it census <laughs> sounds weird. Sounds, sounds like I'm drunk or something. But uh, what a cool idea. Um, it's really kind of hard to get your mind around it because it's so different. So once you go in, once you take your tickets, there's like a circular building and there's a gift shop. And on the outside, the perimeter of the building are all kinds of optical illusion picture spots that you can do. And that's really fun. And again, you, you, you can use, you could use your camera, but I think it's probably better to use your bracelet and take the pictures. And then you go to the locker area and they've got wacky pictures with toilets and urinals. And it's the most bizarre locker room that I've ever been in. It's uh, it's co-ed, which is fine. Most people already had their swimwear on and you could step into a, a sheltered area if you wish to. But yeah, they had toilets. They had uh, drinking fountains there. They had just bizarre sculptures. And again, plenty of locations to get your photo taken because that same wristband that's letting you into your room is also valid at all the theme parks, which is handy. So you walk in this area that's called the town. And I'm like, the town? What is what is the town? Uh, and you walk in and it's on this hill. And it's an old town. It looks like an old west or maybe an old Mexican town. Obviously facades, you know, something out of like Disney or Knott's Berry Farm. And again, you can see that it's on an incline but it must be on some other angle because and it's a forced perspective because you feel dizzy you ha you're having trouble walking yeah it just really plays with your head I mean if you had issues or equilibrium this would not be the place to go but yeah you walk in and you see benches that are sitting at an angle and again every one of these has a photo stop you can get into a barrel and you feel like you're falling out of a barrel it has a river running through it but the river instead of flowing downhill is flowing uphill and it's just one after another and you have no idea what's going on with your brain that's not connecting with your feet it is so wonderful but so weird and then you go all the way up the hill after you're kind of playing around which i wanted to take my time i had so much fun and then there's this other the last building looks sort of like a church and you walk into there and they have even more optical illusions and picture spots yeah they had some that were kind of like a trampoline so when you were jumping up and if you stared up they had swirls on the ceiling so it looked like you were jumping into an illusion because again they're taking your picture at all these locations there were some that looked like you were floating in air you just never knew what you were going to get so of course you have to go to every location and try it all out it's pretty incredible and the nice thing is because we were staying on property we took the shuttle over there about 8 15 in the morning we got there when it first opened so we never saw anybody else in the town we were there so early that all the non-park or non-hotel guests hadn't arrived yet and we essentially had the theme park to ourselves for the first two hours that would be my advice if you're staying at the hotel go early because that way you're going to have a more exclusive experience as far as not feeling like you're rushed or having to wait for someone so after you go through this church area you walk into a cave and, and again you have all of these experiences so you're walking through a jungle and a cave area and i think first comes a water slide yeah and it's a you walk up to the top and you're you kind of thinking okay what kind of water slide is this and again you go sit down on the slide to take off you swipe your wristband so it knows who's on the slide and it is a fast open slide you go flying down and get your picture taken along the way yeah and again because of the wrist uh, band you're wearing it does take your picture but yeah it's a really fast water slide and then is the flying next yeah and then the next thing you go we get out of the water slide and then you go over to the next point and they're all interconnected but they don't seem necessarily like like they are you don't know where you're headed you just follow the trail and they lay you into it's not a zip line because it's more of a harness so you lay down on your stomach in this harness they swipe your wristband and then you take off flying and you fly all through these different trails and again taking your picture super fun uh really enjoyed this uh different from zip lining again because you're in sort of like a superman pose and um the picture sort of made me self-conscious i'm like oh here comes a picture spot i can't look stupid how how do I look cool doing this? And the answer is you really can't, but it's still really fun. So then um, at the end of the flying, you come into this water area and I'm like, am I going to do a water landing? What's what is happening here? And you end up not doing a water landing. You just stop 
where the employees help you out in the water. Yeah, I mean, you get your feet wet. And that is one thing is if you are going to this park, I recommend that you wear water shoes because if you wear flip flops, they're going to make you take them off and you're going to have to do a lot of this barefoot. So Jim has a pair of water shoes. I have a pair of Tevas and you definitely want them because you're going to do a lot of walking. So really good water shoes. Also, if you're wearing, you know, plan on wearing swimwear or shorts over your swimwear if you're a female, because again, you're walking, essentially walking through a theme park in a swimsuit. So I had on like water shorts and a swimsuit because you're kind of in and out of the water throughout the day, which you're happy to because it's hot there. Yeah, I would recommend some covering. I'd recommend some trunks and a shirt of some kind. I wouldn't recommend Speedos, bikinis, <laughs> thongs, anything like that. So um, you're still in the cave and you just kind of go seamlessly from one attraction to the other. So you walk down the path in the cave and comes next is the saltwater float. And this is amazing. It's so much salt in it that you just totally float. And it has bars if you need to pull yourself along. But really, you just float down this river for quite a while. It takes a good 8 to 10 minutes to get through. Again, throughout your time, it's it's quiet. They tell you not to talk. And there's soothing music going and kind of a purple undertone on the lighting. It's taking your picture again. And it's so relaxing because you don't realize how buoyant you are. Yeah, I didn't float very well. You <laughs> floated better than I did. But that's I don't know what that means. But uh, yeah, really fun. It's sort of like an almost like a river that's an isolation chamber. Uh, again, these people thought of everything. So after this river, the next thing you do is a mud river. And keep in mind that these are all man-made, so you have your own channel. It almost looks like a like a race because you or a or a water slide with three slides that you flow through because you you have your own channel, so you're not you're always going to stay in your lane no matter what. Uh, but then you have the mud river, which is which was pretty cool. Maybe that was my favorite part because it was so different. Yeah, and I'm a person that this has become kind of joke because I hate getting dirty. I've always joked that my nightmare is to be wearing all white and to fall into a mud puddle because I just hate to get dirty. I always have. So I was challenging my inner self by doing this and it was so fun that it was like floating down in basically a mocha or a hot chocolate. The water was warm. It had a really smooth feeling to it and you just floated along in the mud. It was really bizarre. It was like the chocolate river and Willy Wonka <laughs> without being sucked up into the pipes. <laughs> uh, so afterwards uh, again you have a picture spot you could do right at the very end, which is cool. And then they have these buckets, which are up on the ceiling, and you could pull them down, and they're, it's like a shower. It's like being in flash dance as uh, the water comes cascading over you. And then you walk through another part of the tunnel that has a mister, so it's almost like a car wash. Yeah, that was pretty fun, because you've got mud everywhere, and I think until we got back and actually washed our clothes out, you didn't realize how muddy, how muddy you were getting, because you're floating in it for 10 minutes. And then, of course, when we were doing the photos right before we got out, I had to do a few scenes since we figured we might as well go for some fun photos where we were doing a splash scene. So we were trying to splash the mud around ourselves for fun. But, yeah, the car wash thing to rinse off is a heck of a lot of fun, which is followed off by the equivalent of like a sauna, which is I think it's supposed to dry you off a tiny bit. Yeah, really, really fun stuff. I mean, the census park is kind of hard to grasp, but when you do it, you're like, this is one of the coolest things we've done. Yeah, and we only did half of it. It's considered to be a half day park. So their admission, if you weren't staying at Hotel Escaret, is $65. So that gives you an idea. We did half of it. The other half of the park is more of a walkthrough with all optical illusions where you look, you know, large in a small space, big chairs. It's And we noticed a lot of families doing that that maybe had more street clothes on as opposed to swimwear. But we decided, you know, we did the part that we were planning on and then we headed back to our hotel after about two and a half hours. Yeah, I didn't really feel the need to get more selfies, which was fine. Um, and again, the people started showing up the lines were getting longer it's not something that that we necessarily wanted to do but i loved ishkaret um the resort the design uh the environment the high quality of the service and the food and the resort itself oh yeah i mean i would say this goes down with one of my favorite all-inclusives of all time and we were trying to count on this trip we've been to at least 30 of them so we have a pretty high standard and this one it came down if it's not number two it's number one i mean it's right up there with my favorites absolutely i want to go back again as a matter of fact when we were there we were like 
when is the soonest that we can come back to Ishkaret? Yeah, we and it's the first time we've ever said, gosh, we want to come back to a hotel and actually do the activities. We were texting family members going, hey, how about we do this as a family vacation with you? And we can plan out times where we do some of the activities. Some of the people in our group did the um, extreme. So they were doing the zip line park and they did the seven zips. And then that continued on to ATVs. They said that was a lot of fun. And they agreed with us that you want to get there early before the general public gets there and it gets busy. But there's so many next one. I think the next time we go, we definitely want to do the one that's all cenotes so we can swim in more caves. Absolutely. Um, this is such a cool park. Uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you're enjoying a lot of this information that we're giving you about a, a park that you really just have to experience. Uh, the pictures and the description, we can do our best, but it's something that you need to go and see the whimsy, see the high quality, and just the thought that went into everything. If there's a downside, I did get lost a few times. Uh, no one really explained the picture spots. That took a little time to get used to, but by and large, I just thought that this place thought of everything and they thought of things that I didn't even know I needed. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, who would have thought that I would have had so much fun taking pictures while in a swimming pool, of all things? Usually wouldn't want to do that. And I was also thinking when we were up in that bridge, in that clear bridge pool, if someone were doing a wedding and they wanted to do a wreck the dress, that would be a perfect location for a wreck the dress because your wedding dress would be floating with you in this clear pool with the ocean in the background. There's great things for fun activities. They've been able to carve out quiet spots. If you want some quiet time, there's pools. If you want some beach, they have beach, they have caves. They've just, they've maximized the space and they've thought of incredible environments. Um, I don't know. This is a tough one. What do you think your three favorite things are? Oh, this one is going to be a tough one. The room itself with those amazing marshmallow beds, hands down. I'm going to also go with the clear bridge, actually the whole Casa Fuego deck up there with the views. And then shelfies because I've never had so much fun taking photos I mean taking stupid pictures on a trip and we actually bought them and they've all been a lot of fun to have. Those are all great and I would pick those myself but since you picked those I'm going to say uh, the overall design uh, the fact that you're able to have a entirely full resort but have enough for people to do and enough places for people to go that it never felt full that is an incredible achievement and something to keep in mind because a lot of times you have a family and you can only go on spring break or summer break when everybody is out and everything feels busy. This did not feel busy during a peak time and I think that says something to the thought process that these people have put into the Ishkaret Resort. Uh, I'm also going to say that the spa if you enjoy the spa, if you like a good therapy place, definitely uh, check out the spa and the open areas. And then I'm going to say all of the swimming areas, the pools, uh, all of the, uh, the river areas and the front that looks like a grotto, just so many places to jump in and go swimming and just have a have a great time. They've thought of everything and I'm just a big fan and I can't wait to go back. Yeah, hands down, I guess this is going to have to go with probably my number one all-inclusive to date because I just cannot think of anything they didn't have and that I wanted. So hands down, two thumbs up. So if uh, you're watching this and you have some questions if Ishkaret is right for you or if you're looking to uh, book Ishkaret, how can people get in touch with you. They can contact me, K-A-R-I at StellarTravel.com. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at The Best Trip Ever, also on Facebook at The Best Trip Ever, and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you have enjoyed this video, this uh, podcast, and its content. And be sure to check out Ishkaret and find out if it can be part of your best trip ever.